mail from GEB uh, saying that I have a chance to present on 26th uh, of morning and I had not much you know of, of a choice so uh, I thought of dropping it first and then I uh, you know uh, thought of something like uh, a quote which is said entrepreneurs don't give up on opportunities right right guys so this was one of the opportunities which uh, you know I, I wanted to take so the topic of the today's you know my speech would be face the truth moments of my life uh, I would be talking about mostly about my life so uh, like uh, they, they said in the mail like I want I have to share a motivational uh, you know story so what what has been my motivation what what's my motivation so uh, I want to talk about an Indian citizen you know uh, he's no Mark Zuckerberg he's no Alan Musk to be motivated from uh, but uh, he's a very simple kind of guy whose life started from a very small village where they didn't had even the basic facilities like washrooms or you know schools or anything but uh, he had one dream in his mind that he didn't want it to you know give up he didn't want to settle up uh, in the conditions he was born so he worked really hard and right now right now he is a civil servant at the go Indian government so uh, you know he lives in a two be you know a two story building he drives in mini suv he has a beautiful wife and two beautiful kids and that man is none other than my father so i have been really motivated by him from the very starting of my life so yeah uh, as you all might be knowing uh, my name is nehil vaid i'm an indian citizen and like every indian citizen uh, when you are a child you are told uh, you know like a fairy tale kind of thing which is i believe a life process which i've been told so you are told like you take birth which is uh, you know mostly not your decision uh, not probably my parents decision as well i believe so then uh, you know you take birth uh, you come across your studies and everything you go through your studies you pass your classes you go to college you work even harder in college to get a good job then you are expected to you know uh, promote in your uh, in your jobs and then uh, you are expected to marry in between of these things you are expected to have kids because india has a lot of you know a problem with population so we devote our time to you know produce kids to support that cause you know population crisis so then uh, yeah and then at the last of uh, you know you retire and uh, at the ending what you do is wait for your death so that was uh, you know the fairy tale watch for what was you know uh, told to me and being a kid like this you know uh, a way more cute uh, a way less cuter than that i was almost a kid like that you know very obedient very obedient to my parents in the childhood so almost what happened is i i did whatever they told me you know almost everything what they told me i i went through school i went through my college everything so you know uh, like uh, you must be knowing about an examination called as joint and entrance examination of engineering it's it's one of the toughest examination of india which you have to crack to get into good engineering colleges in india so this this is one of the stats uh, you know uh, every year almost 10 lakh students apply for this examination and the uh, you know uh, the seats all over iit is uh, uh, you know available are only 9000 so very tricky you know odds uh, i guess you must be noticing uh, but then I was a kid like this, you know, I was always like kind of, uh, you know, first, second, third in my school and everything. So I got a kind of disease, which is a very, 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 you know, uh, serious kind of disease. I got very sick and this is that disease. I got overconfident. I got really overconfident, you know. Uh, I got so overconfident that I thought without studying, without studying for the hardest examination in the country, I would be getting All India Rank 1, you know. But uh, uh, some uh, like when when you when you reach to the top of the clouds, it is expected. You know, it is mostly expected that you'll fall. You know, down. So that's what happened. I failed. I failed big time in my first attempt. It was not AIR one. It was like uh, something in lakhs or even more than that. I didn't got any college. Even not the private institutes of India were uh, you know taking me without management. Uh, or what do you call it donation into the college so this is what I call my you know first face the truth moment I face the truth like then but then I had always this you know I told you my motivational speech don't settle up where you are so I didn't settled up 
I tried again. You know, I went to uh, a place called Kota, which is called the educational hub of uh, India. I went there. I studied again. I tried again. And uh, you know, uh, after uh, after almost a year of uh, you know demotivation, failures, tests, everything, finally I got into an IIT just to realize that life is not so different in the best best colleges of the country. It's always a race out there too. You have to get grades. You have to get CPI up. You have to participate in other things because it's it's said that they are all about all over all around development of the child. Then, uh, like after after all this, uh, like uh, I came across, you know, when when I was trying to build up everything, uh, there was this moment in my life. So, first year of my college, I was giving an audition for an anchoring uh, of an event in college. There were like 50, uh, you know, students of first year sitting out there preparing for their auditions. Uh, there were like five or six uh, uh, seniors who were auditioning us, and what uh, uh, they did, they gave me a script. And on the third or fourth line of the script, there was this one word uh, which I never came across in my entire life. So I mispronounced it, and they laughed me out of the room. You know, they just laughed me. They just they didn't rejected me. They just laughed me out of the room. And that word was entrepreneurship. I spelled it something entre pre new or something something like that. You know, I, I was a kid who was. Uh, uh, some, uh, you know, I was a kid uh, who was more into, uh, I was a kid who was from a very small uh, town who had never heard of this uh, word. So what do you do when you, you know, fail? I believe what you do is uh, you, you, you know, get up. So what I did in college is uh, I learned everything I could about entrepreneurship, you know. I learned everything. I wanted to do a lot of things, but uh, you know, then uh, there's this there's this concept which I don't know most of you know or not. This is called procrastination. I faced this as uh, you know one of the biggest failures of my college life. Procrastination is a thing which is said to be an inability of a child, but it is not an inability of a child or a person. It is a human you know human concept which is in everyone's brain. You know, we we all do this thing, but I guess I you know pushed the limit too far. You know, I just procrastinated everything. I uh, almost like that. So at the ending of the college, uh, when you ha when you don't when you don't have much options, what you do, you get a job. So I applied for a job. I you know uh, got a job. Yeah. So I applied for a job, and uh, then uh, I got into a city called as Bangalore, the famous uh, startup hub of the uh, in, in uh, India. You know. So this was my life for the first. Uh, Two or three months, I guess. Uh, we used to party from what, like Monday mo uh, Friday night to Monday morning. Uh, we always used to, you know, enjoy our lives. It was the first time we were, uh, you know, earning money from ourselves and spending by ourselves. So this was my entire life. And you know, I I pushed it again to a certain kind of extent. And I believe that 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 certain kind of extension of the pushing was the thing which made me believe this thing. This was my third. Uh, you know, face the truth moment. Enough is enough. You can't do this all your life, you know. You can't just keep working five days a week and keep, you know, enjoying two days, uh, you know, the weekends you get. So then what I do, uh, you know, I had... So have you have you all seen uh, the movie on Mark Zuckerberg, uh, The Social Network? So yeah, uh, there was this thing he said in that movie that I wanted to get out of my breakup, so I needed an idea. I wanted to get out of my, uh, you know, this life. So I wanted an idea to work on. You know, work was not enough. So that was the time, uh, you know, when I, when I searching, when I started searching for ideas, and I came to realize that uh, I came to realize that, uh, you know, uh, I can get ideas out of my own life. My whole life would, you know, uh, is kind of a, a failure. I can say I can get ideas of my own life. So that was the time I, I, you know, founded. I started working on this project on this startup called as Rapspace. Rapspace is a career guidance. is It's a career assessment tool which helps you, you know, uh, transform yourself from uh, outside the cognitive biases of the society. So it's like uh, we help you, you know, uh, uh, choose a career and then assist you in that career step by step as you go along. 
so this uh, the the entire vision of this is to you know uh, the ed education system is outdated we have to change it somehow it's it's not working so this was the whole idea it's a very simple idea for now and yeah i guess uh, uh, i i i i believe that our education system is a system which is built to you know remove us from our creativity so when we are children we are born very creative you know there was this uh, there was this moment in my life i was talking to uh, one of my cousin sisters she's like what like 5 or 6 years old she was she's very fond of drawing you know she's very fond of drawing she was, she draws a lot of things most of the things make sense most of the things don't make sense but he never cares she never cares you know so i i i caught her one time drawing something and she was uh, you know i asked her that what are you drawing and she said i am drawing god I said uh you know nobody knows what good god looks like and she said if you give me a moment everybody will so that was the confidence in her that she would make believe you know everyone what good look what god looks like so yeah uh that that's my entire story and uh, uh i guess i would thank you everyone thank you geb for giving me all this opportunity thank you Thank you so much uh, Mr. Snell Vandy